Yo ho ho, Da Mafia. Welcome to yet another edition of the Da Mafia Report. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so thankful that I am still able to make these report card videos into the 2020 and 2021 season. The reason I'm here is, is because the Buffalo Bills ended up taking care of business in a very surprising way, right? I was not expecting us to win the game the way that we won the game, right? I was completely anticipating Josh Allen to use his ginormous balls and throw the rest of the team on his back and carry us to victory and win out in some crazy shootout between the Bills and the Baltimore Ravens. But that's not how it happened. In fact, we ended up having our defense step up and look absolutely immaculate. Stepping up for the first time since, in my opinion, the 2019 season. I have not seen a performance from that unit since 2019. But regardless, I do digress. I'm going to go on ahead and get into the specifics of each and every single phase of the ball and what exactly happened on Saturday night during primetime divisional round playoffs. Per usual, guys, I'm going to be going through how I felt, how the offense performed, and then how the defense performed, and then give them grades at the end of the day and lightly touch on how I see this carrying out throughout the rest of the playoffs. Before I dive into that, I do need to give just a quick reminder, guys. A lot of you always ask, Dan, what's the best way to talk to you? Well, keep in mind, I am at Real Dan Mitchell on all social platforms. That's including Instagram, that's including Twitter, that's including TikTok. So if you ever want to talk to me or you want to see some of my other content, whether or not that it's my tweets, my Instagram posts, my TikToks, which I think are getting pretty funny, then hands down, feel free to go follow me. Like I said, at Real Dan Mitchell, absolutely everywhere. So yeah, Dumb Mafia, I feel like we need to start off with our offense, right? Now, when you end up looking at the final score, 17 to 3, that does look like a blowout, right? That was a complete domination, more specifically from our defense, but let's focus a little bit more on, on the offensive side of the ball. Going into this game, I knew that Josh Allen was going to have his share of struggles going up against this Baltimore Ravens defense. Their secondary is tremendous. Their linebacker core is great. Their defensive line is great as well. The offensive line ended up protecting Josh Allen for the most part, but we really couldn't get a lot of things going, whether or not you wanted to blame that on our run game during the first half or whether or not you just wanted to blame it on the tight, tight coverage that we ended up seeing from the Baltimore Ravens moving forward. Looking at Josh Allen, he definitely didn't have spectacular numbers. He still completed over 62% of his passes. He only threw for a little over 200 yards, and he had that one monster touchdown to Stephon Diggs. So at the end of the day, he did his job. Brian Dable was quoted that Josh Allen performed the way that he was supposed to perform in order to beat the Ravens. I'm not particularly sure that I buy into that because I don't feel that the Bills were confident going into the game that we were going to be able to hold the Ravens to three points like it actually ended up happening. But of course, there was a couple of things. I love Stephon Diggs' performance per usual. Dude, man, did yet another 100-yard game. He is clearly a wide receiver one, a force to be reckoned with. And it's, it's very hard for me to see a cornerback in this entire league that can completely lock him down. It's simply impossible. Some of the play calls were interesting. I know that Josh Allen and Dable were trying to mix up a bunch of those deep passes to Gabe Davis. We just couldn't connect on them. But at the end of the day, the Buffalo Bills offense ended up putting 10 points on the board. And of course, those final seven came from the play of the damn game. But as far as it works out, our offense did what they needed to do. I would have felt a lot better if we were to put up more than just 17 points, but thank God our defense ended up showing out for us. As far as a grade for our offense is concerned, I'm going to go on ahead and give it a B-. minus. I would have liked to see a little bit more production. I wouldn't have liked to see so many of those three and outs or punts, etc. But it doesn't matter because if there's any game that we need to rev up our offensive engines, it's this one that's about to happen this coming Sunday at the AFC Championship. So offense got B minus like I was telling you. Now it comes down to our damn defense. Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I can go on ahead and I can just look you in the eye and I can give you like this in-depth analysis and make it a surprise what my grade is going to be, but it is clear as fucking day that the Buffalo Bills defense ended up getting an A+. plus. Three points. Three points from the Baltimore Ravens, the best rush attack in the entire NFL, and the Buffalo Bills had an answer. They, they not only had an answer for their running backs and Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, but they also had an answer for Lamar Jackson. 
the amount of times that we ended up seeing Lamar Jackson get sacked, our defensive line busting through the offensive line, making plays, making it very, very difficult for Lamar Jackson to be Lamar Jackson. This entire unit absolutely stepped up. And so I saw this defensive game plan and it reminded me a lot of what I think the Buffalo Bills were trying to do against Tennessee during the beginning of the season, right? We wanted to completely shut down the run. And when the Buffalo Bills want to shut down the run and that's their sole focus, and so just rely on the secondary of utilizing their athletics and having confidence in them that they can go on ahead and take care of man coverage, fill their gaps and make plays. The Buffalo Bills completely executed this and it worked out. Now, it does help that the Ravens offense was dead last in the league for overall passing production. We knew exactly what they were going to do. I'm pretty sure the Baltimore Ravens ended up running it 20 times in a row before they even attempted their first pass. I mean, I really can't say a lot because Josh Allen ended up going out ahead and passing for the first time, his first 20 offensive snaps. But in our defense, we really don't have much of a run game at this point, so who blames them? But I really feel like Greg Roman on the Baltimore Ravens wasn't very creative, I would say. And I think that the Buffalo Bills just ended up having a damn answer. And then last but not least, Taron Johnson. Dude, this man loves playing on NBC primetime. This man loves playing on NBC primetime games. He has only has two career interceptions his entire career, and they are both pick sixes. That was amazing, ladies and gentlemen. That was the death nail right in the coffin of the Baltimore Ravens moving forward, and I could not be happier. I'm sure that y'all ended up seeing my game time reaction. I completely lost my fucking mind. I am just slowly starting to get my voice back. But at the end of the day, we need to thank our defense for this win because <laughs> they showed up for us, guys. They are the sole reason why we are going to the AFC Championship based off of our performance in the divisional round. They really stepped up. And if we can somehow have a performance like that from our defense and a performance that we're so used to seeing from our offense during the exact same game, just send the Lombardi to Buffalo right now. If our team can be consistent on both sides of the ball, play our best at both sides of the ball, against the Kansas City Chiefs, dude, book your tickets to Tampa. Book them. As far as the grade is concerned for the defense, I mean, it's A+. Plus. I mean, what other grade could I possibly give this defense? I mean, they completely won the game for us. So, um, as far as special teams, I mean, I definitely didn't like that missed field goal from Tyler Bass. Uh, but then again, I suppose it could be worse. The best kicker in all of football ended up missing two that entire game so I mean I guess maybe it had to do with the wind at the stadium etc but we need Bass to be as consistent as he has been all year I'm hoping he just ended up getting that one out of the system and I'm hoping even more that we don't have a game that is relying on him to win it for us so yeah ladies and gentlemen that's going to be the report card video for tonight do me a favor Leave a comment of what your grades were for all three units, what you thought. How excited are you for the Kansas City Chiefs game? Give me your early predictions and keep on the lookout for my preview video of the Kansas City Chiefs game. Most likely going to drop that on Wednesday. I'm going to do a live Q&A tomorrow night, Tuesday night. So um, let's do it up. Dom Mafia, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another edition of the Dom Mafia Report. And before I let you go, always remember, let's go Buffa. Low.